Hey, everyone. My name is Peter. I'm a developer advocate on the Firebase team. And I'm excited to be here today with Daniel from Classkick. Hey, Daniel, why don't you introduce yourself? All right. Hey there, Peter. I'm excited to be here today. And I would love to share more about why people love Classkick so much. First off, I want to share a little bit about myself, as you requested. I am Daniel James, a graduate at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. I hold a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, and I'm addicted to building apps. At Classkick, I maintain the iPad application. And because of this position, I often interface with Firebase. Awesome. Cool. So as far as I understand, Classkick is a tool, an application that makes it easier for teachers to teach their students at school and also virtually. Um, so why don't we go into how that looks like from a user's perspective first before we go in, into the technical details. So maybe we can start with how Classkick looks like for a student. Daniel, can you show us? Yeah, Peter, I would love to show you the student's point of view. All right, so if you look at my demo here, we see that the web client is showing the student's perspective. The student has just logged into class for today, and they have a message. It says, good morning. I have a fun exercise before today's lesson plan on slide two. So now the student can go to this slide and they can interact with the lesson plan. The request is to move all the squares to reveal your group for the day. And as the student does this, it updates for the teacher in real time and the teacher will know when they're ready to begin the lesson plan. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think in the background, we saw the, the teacher's perspective. Um, so maybe we can look at that next and you can tell us a little bit about like what the teacher can do and how the teacher can interact with the students. Yeah, yeah, sure. So as you noticed, this is the teacher's point of view and this is on the iPad. So you can imagine a teacher just in the morning with their iPad watching over a full classroom of students. So this is me, the student that was on the web client and there could be a lot of me. There could be Daniel, Scott, Kayla, and the teacher is watching over the classroom and they can see where each student is at in the assignment. So as I was clicking through the assignment, the teacher would have known, oh, Daniel has came into class or maybe not came into class. Maybe Daniel's at home or maybe Daniel's on a road trip. But Daniel has logged into the assignment and I can see that Daniel is on slide one here. And when Daniel interacts with the assignment, I can see exactly what my student is doing and that he's ready for work. Okay, cool. So that also means that the students can probably ask for help if they get stuck. So how does this work? So from the student's perspective, let's say I need help. Let's say I can't figure out this assignment. So what I would do is I would click on this icon up here in the top right, and I have two choices. I can either ask for help or I can ask the teacher to check my work. So if I want help, I can click to raise my hand, and you'll see that on the teacher's client, the hand has been raised, and this teacher can respond to the student by clicking into their slide and give them whatever help they see fit. Cool, yeah, this looks very useful, um, especially if you imagine you've got um, a class full of students and um, everybody might be progressing at a different pace, and then uh, some people might get stuck, and then it's easier for the teacher to see where they need to help. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really neat. So um, in the background, I think I already spotted uh, the Firebase console. So now I'm I'm really curious how you use Firebase to to make this magic happen. Um, I'm guessing that you use the real time database, Daniel. Is that right? Yes, Peter. That would be a really good guess. The real time database really fit our needs for this use case. And as you noticed, we can use real time to save some properties in a key value store about the experience that's going on in the canvas. So when I click Please Help, you can see that Firebase Real-Time Database has this very convenient feature that highlights what information is changing. And so on the help request, when I tap Please Help, all the information gets populated and both clients can see it. OK, cool. So they're both subscribed to this node. Um, or to multiple nodes in the teacher's case, so that um, you know the client can say, um, student A and C raise their hands, and then uh, as the teacher goes to help them, then uh, they can probably mark that they've helped the student, which will lower the hand, I guess, virtually. Yes, that's exactly right. So all of the hands can 
raise and as teachers click through and help a student and mark on their canvas, it automatically lowers the hand for the teacher. At Classkick, we really like to automate whatever we can for the teacher to make their lives easier. So I think you mentioned that you support a variety of different elements that you can put on the canvas to make it more um, engaging for students. So which kinds of elements are we talking here? Yeah, absolutely. At, at Classkick, we've been working to expand our import features. So for now, a teacher can highlight text, can draw or write on the canvas. Uh, the teacher can add a text box. We can add a line for geometry. Math teachers really use this. You can speak to your students with an audio element. You can add a clip to a YouTube video or any other link you want to, or an image from your device. We have these things called manipulatives that are really interesting. Uh, these boxes are actually manipulatives, which allow you to do some fun auto grading features. And then also we have a multiple choice and a fill in the blank. Oh, cool. All right. So, um, you know, given that these are very, very different and ha probably have loads of different attributes, how do you store these in the real time database? That's what I wonder. While all these attributes are different, um, it's not really of a major concern because we rely heavily on the real time database to store things like the location and the relationship to maybe other elements on screen. So we actually use SQL to store elements. Uh, and then we use Firebase to link to that element and store metadata about that element. Oh, OK. OK, cool. So it's actually two different systems that you use for storage. So um, the real time data database mostly is for um, achieving this um, there's real-time co collaboration on the canvas, and then storage is somewhere else. Yes, that's exactly right. Cool. So yeah, I imagine that um, this must be a really um, useful tool for teachers um, for being able to run a class with um, loads of students and you know being able to see what's going on. And probably it's, it's also great for students um, to basically silently raise their hand without their classmates being able to see that they had a question and you know maybe being ashamed of asking yet again. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really like this. If you think about some of the features that we have, um, not only can students raise their hands silently, but other students can help students. Um, so we have a we have a peer feature to allow students that want to participate more in class to help each other. Um, and yeah, so, when students raise their hands, those hand raises are persisted for a long period of time. So imagine how many students raise their hand in class and then put it down, kind of disgruntled that the teacher didn't respond. But with class cake, when a hand is raised, that's persisted in the real-time database, and the teacher will always have an opportunity to help that student out. That's brilliant. So um, in a normal class, you would probably have like 20-ish to 30 students, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, about your typical classroom size, 20 to 30 plus. How far did you roll out on Classcake? Is it just being used in the United States or is this a worldwide thing now? This is a worldwide thing. We have a huge audience in Singapore. We have an audience in Africa, Australia. Any continent you name, we're probably there. Okay, cool. Yeah, and um, I'm, I'm guessing that it was hugely beneficial throughout the pandemic. Yeah, this was very beneficial during the pandemic. It allowed teachers to stay connected with their students as they weren't allowed to return to the schools. And the collaboration feature made sure that lesson plans were being completed and that kids weren't being left behind. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, yeah, it's great to see how technology helps to solve real world problems and make the world a better place one step at a time. Um, yeah. Daniel, thank you so much for being on the show and taking us behind the scenes of Classkick and how you use the real-time database to build it. Yeah, anytime. Thanks for having me. And that was another episode of Firebase Stories, where we show you how developers like yourself build applications that make the world a better place one step at a time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you the next time.